the world's fastest licensed Xbox controller. Elite eSports design, all remappable buttons, swappable pro thumbsticks, custom paddles, swappable faceplate, works on the One, the S, the Series X and PC, 8 times faster input responses, we'll come back to that later, surround audio by Dolby Atmos, a clutch trigger system that beats out the typical hair trigger system that we've seen in the past, an amazing dedicated app, a carry case, spare parts, a beautiful braided cable, 100 quid or 100 dollars. What? Victrix Gambit, let's go. Yo, this is your first time here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name's Steven. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Victrix Gambit. There it is though. Beautiful. I have decided upon reviewing this that we are either being bumped by every other controller manufacturer that exists for features based on price, we're being bumped, scanned, whatever you want to call it, or Victrix have just found some sort of glitch in the matrix that allows them to make controllers with all these features for this price point. Blown away. I've been talking about this controller for quite a while and I've only just managed to get my hands on it a little while ago to be able to review it. I saw the ad pop up on Amazon and I was like, Can't to be right. It looked like a bump, like maybe it would be shit quality or maybe like it was missing the stuff, it was saying the stuff that it had that it didn't actually have. But what? This is a very, very affordable pro controller with everything you could possibly ask for from a controller. So I'm going to just go through what it comes with, a kind of in-depth review of it, my thoughts on it, whether I think that it competes with some of the other ones, uh, and that's kind of it. If you're new here, don't forget to click that sub button, it helps me out massively, it doesn't cost you any money at all. Still on the road to 2k and hopefully we will make it by the end of the year. Anyway, let's go. So the Victrix Gambit comes in at 100 quid. This is a pro controller, they market it as the world's fastest licensed Xbox controller and that is because in testing it came out as 8 times faster or 8 times less latency than any of the other controllers. Now that's an interesting point that I will come on to a little bit later on but that is bloody good. Even we know my thoughts on latency, that is good good good. But let's talk about the way that it looks first. This is how it comes out the box, the normal white faceplate, cool dark buttons, little splash of purple under the sticks, purple on the back, paddles and all. It's quite a cool looking bit of kit. The only thing is that it might not suit your setup because you only get white or purple. I'd like to see a black one. That'd be quite cool. Aside from that, it is a nice looking bit of kit. It's very kind of aggressive gaming style, if you like, but it's a nice, nice, nice bit of kit. They call it an elite esports design. I don't know. This is going to be subjective again to what you, what you like and what you don't like, but I kind of really do like the look of it. Oh, purple is my go-to, as you can see from the things behind me, I do enjoy a purple colour scheme, so that suits me just well. But as I say, the black one would be really, really nice. This comes with all remappable buttons through the dedicated app. The app is fantastic. It blows the Razer app out the water for me. It's so user-friendly. It has things like it lets you check on all the buttons. It lets you kind of troubleshoot to see if you're having any issues where you're having them and then we'll try and fix them for you, which is amazing. It lets you remap all the buttons very, very intuitively and you can mess about with the buttons that the back paddles are assigned to as well. Comes with the custom paddles. Now you'll, you might notice, I'll put a video here. I talked about the dual sense that's incoming and that seems to have two paddles. This one does indeed have four, but it also has an option for you to swap out to just two. So it's as simple as this part here just pops out and you pop this one in and instead of having these two on each side, you just have one, which makes it quite similar to my, I'm now going to say previous favourite controller, which was the Razer Raiju. It makes it similar to that where it just has the one stick, but the choice, the choice of them is is class. So it looks like it's already going to blow the PS5 one out the, out the water, as far as functionality goes, not to feel, but I'll get onto that later on. But yeah, as far as functionality goes, amazing. It has swappable thumbsticks. It comes standard with two normal concave standard height sticks, and it gives you one extra tall one, which I have put onto here, because I just prefer that on the right hand side. It comes with a slightly stumpier one. One that is domed here. They change very easily. Faceplate just comes off like this. Then the sticks come off here. Just like that. And then you just pop the other one on top. And it's as easy as that. So they're kind of, you know, they're keeping up with the other places. Although the thumbsticks aren't metal and they aren't amazingly kind of good quality in the case, the ones that come in, they still fit the bill. And I still really do like them. And I think if you were to put them with something like the precision rings, oh, you're talking about the increased or the decreased latency that it gives you, the fast response time. With the precision rings and the nice sticks, I think you could be onto an absolute winner for one of the best aiming controllers on the market. Oh, it's big claims. I know it's big claims and it seems like I say this every time, but I've been talking about wanting to get a hold of this one for ages and it just seems like it absolutely slaps. Here we go again. I'm still only at less than 2k subs. If you're on your phone, turn it this way. Press the sub button. If you're on the computer, back out. Press the sub button. Helps me massively. If you're on your TV, as I've said before, I've no idea how that works. So go on your phone. Sub to me. Pretty please. Because I'm getting sick of doing these little segues and I just want to have 2000 by Christmas. Thanks. Bye. The swap of a faceplate, this is the purple one. I do like purple, but I feel like that's just too much for me. If they come out with a black one, I will almost definitely get it. But the purple one, not really for me, but it is nice for it to be able to do that. So you just swap that one out and it gives it a little bit of a different look if that is what you are going for. This does work on the Xbox One, Xbox One X, Xbox One S and the PC. 
and in most cases I would imagine that a lot of people will be using it on PC. However, this is, I'm going to say now, the best controller for Xbox. Outright, I'm going to say, if you have an Xbox and you're looking for a Pro Controller, buy this bad boy, 100%. So the eight times faster input speed. So they tested this against other leading brands. Now, I have a, a kind of theory on, on input lag and latency that I don't really think it exists anymore. However, the latency and input lag difference between mouse and keyboard, or your ability to be able to make fast micro adjustments on mouse and keyboard and controller, that disparity is still quite large. So I believe the difference in latency and input lag between controllers is so minimal now that it doesn't matter. It's kind of irrelevant. However, pushing towards making it closer to mouse and keyboard is a huge, huge win. Because anything that we can get to make the controller people closer to mouse and keyboard, the better. And so this being able to, in testing, push it eight times closer to the mouse and keyboard players that's ridiculously amazing. So when it claims it's the world's fastest, it has tested it against other Xbox first party and second party controllers, and it comes out on top by a lot. How can you go wrong with that? You can't. The surround audio by Dolby Atmos, it just means if you do plug in through the controller, you're gonna get amazing surround sound audio straight through the controller. As I say, I'll be using it on a PC, and I'd have my headset plugged straight into the PC. So it's not really something that I'll be testing in a lot of detail. However, I'll take the word for it that if it matches up to all the rest of the features, then it's probably absolutely fantastic. The clutch triggers. Now this is an interesting one. These, apart from the Turtle Beach Recon, which I've talked about quite a lot, has the nicest feeling triggers ever. It's got this some sort of groove. It's not even rubber, it's plastic, but it has these grooves on it and they're so, so nice. And the trigger system, now this is the first time I've seen this because I've seen hair triggers where it'll let you stop it halfway, all the way, blah, 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 blah. However, what you do is when you push it in some of the way, you pull this little purple tab across and it'll let you, wherever you stop it, that's where the trigger will go to. And if you just let it come all the way out, it has a tiny, tiny little bit of throw, which is basically like a mouse click. And when we're coming back to the world's fastest controller, it's so much like a mouse click, like some of the other ones. It's even shorter than some of the other hair trigger stuff I've seen. So like the Thrustmaster and whatever else, it's even shorter than that. So it is so close to being a mouse click that it is unbelievable. It's my favorite hair trigger system that I've seen so far. And obviously the most comprehensive because it doesn't just give you one, two, or three different sections. You can have almost, well, not unlimited, but you can have as many as you need all the way down, depending on the game that you're playing. So that gets a massive thumbs up for me. Comes with a lovely, lovely carry case, which for the price, again, is pretty damn good. Carry case is nice as well, black and purple, good little bit of kit. And just the way it sits in there, even as a displace piece, is uh, pretty nice. It is, it's good. Yeah, if you're ever going to take this anywhere with you, which you probably will want to if you're going to use it somewhere else, it's nice, nice, nice. Because I'm a sucker for purple, I'm obviously going to enjoy this cable very much. However, how nice is that? It is a very, very top quality piece kit and it goes all the way into the controller, so there's no way that it's going to come out. It is wired, by the way. It's completely wired. It isn't wireless. But if you're in the world of pro controllers, you'll be probably pretty used to using wired controllers by now, I would imagine. And the cable is long. So it's long enough for you to use to plug into PC or Xbox and sit quite far away from the Xbox, should you wish to do that. The back panel as I said before, can be mapped to whatever you want relatively intuitively. They do take a wee bit of getting used to. They are in a nice place, they're kind of similar to the ones that you'd see on like the scuff or the old PS4 attachment. Yeah, once they don't take too long, once you've got them, you've got them and they feel nice to click. They're relatively short throw, less like, they're more like buttons rather than like paddles, even though they are on the back, they feel like buttons rather than pulling on the paddles like you might have used in the past. But I kind of like that because it's very easy to use and press and there's no issue with it at all. That's all of the pros for a hundred quid. That is ludicrous. So I've decided we're either being bumped by everybody or they've just found a way to do this and they're a loss making company and we're not going to get any more controllers from Victrix because they make stuff that's so damn cheap. Now going on to what few cons I have. What it's missing is, and I thought, I thought, I thought, See these up here? I was really hoping that like on the Razer Wolverine and that, they have buttons just inside the triggers just here. I thought that's what these were, and they're no. These are just sort of start buttons up the top, and I'm kind of upset about that. It is a big deal for me because when I talked about the V2 and the V2 Chroma, I love the V2 so much because it has those ones inside. Actually, I use those buttons more than I use the back paddles in general. So I'm because I love this so much, I'm going to get rid of those buttons and I'm going to start just using the back paddles altogether now because this is such a goated piece of kit. I think if there was another iteration of it, that'd be one thing that would be really worth adding in. The second thing is, doesn't it feel massively premium? It's very, very light and the plastic it's made out of isn't fantastic. I think there are ways that you could 
up that, rubber grips for example, or the kind of rubber tape stuff that you can get to put onto it as well, that kind of grip tape, might help. Not too much of a letdown, and you are only paying 100 quid, but also you can look at it two ways. You are only paying 100 quid, but you are paying 100 quid, so I would like to make it feel a little bit more premium. Maybe even just some weights in it, like Power A done, and that would just make it feel a little bit weightier. There's probably a way I could do that myself as well, but hey, is what it is. And then the last one is no dead zone, cha ability to change dead zone. I think firmware update could probably fix that, but you cannot change the dead zone on this in the app which is a bit sad. I'm hoping that because it's such an amazing thing and I've seen in all the Amazon reviews that people have been experiencing no stick drift and so on and so forth, that we won't need to adjust dead zones, but it would be a nice thing to have. Some games obviously have it in it, like Koji could go in and you can adjust the dead zone that way, but it would be nice to be able to do it in the dedicated app. But anyway, that's all the features. That's where it comes from. That's my thoughts on it. Oh my God, I am mind blown by this. Uh, just to, to, to reiterate, I bought this controller myself, it's not sponsored, I haven't spoken to them, nothing like that, I don't even know if they're a UK based company, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, this is bought and I'm just going in on it, I'd wanted it for a long long time and so that is all. So I haven't went over everything, I genuinely believe for an Xbox style controller for either PC or Xbox, for your money you will not get a better controller than this at the moment. On camera, willing to say it, this is now my favourite Xbox controller completely. It outbeats the V2 Chroma, just, which I put up the other day, but yeah, it, it, it beats that by a bit, and it is a lot cheaper. So, yes, is what it is. I'll leave a link to it down below if you want to buy it from my Amazon affiliate link, when obviously I get a little small kickback if you do do that, which I would highly, highly recommend. If you do have one, you're thinking about getting one, you have any questions about it, please leave a comment down below, let me know what you think, leave a like, and yes, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.